Welcome to Inspire and Move, the show that inspires you to create, connect, and grow. I'm going to bring you meaningful conversations, aha moments, and all the motivation you need to up-level every part of your life. I'm Ali Aruda, founder of Inspire and Move, and your personal hype girl. I've gone from fashion school, to celebrity stylist, to corporate marketing, to brick and mortar entrepreneurship with my husband, each time learning incredible lessons how to pivot, reimagine, and implement the steps to become successful. I am passionate about inspiring others to live their best life, a life of joy. We have the power to design a life that we love because life is too short not to. The best part is that you weren't meant to do this alone. If you feel like you were meant for more, let me ride shotgun with you and together, let's get you to where you want to go. Hey everyone, I am so excited because this is a double whammy, community podcast, Inspire and Move podcast. We've done this before, but we're in a studio. Love this. This is so fun. The last time we did this, we were in Newport Beach. Oh yeah. And the time we recorded together before that, we were in my dining room. And I think I was your first guest. You were. Oh. Look at us. Look how much you've done in the last year. I know, Inspire and Move is not even a year old on the podcast. Yes. And look at you, you're like bumping and bumping. Just trying to keep up with you, girlfriend. Mm-mm, that's not true. You are uh, you are my Yoda. You are my muse. <laughs> <laughs> I love this little love affair. Well, actually, you are my Yoda. We did talk about this on the podcast we did with Involve because we were talking about partnerships, mm. which I know is really key to you. And we're going to talk a bit about that today. But I was always like, hi, you can't ask anyone for anything. You must like do all of these things all by yourself. And you were like, no, girl, I have an Aperol spritz cart at my event every year. And I was like, in your backyard, what? And then... Now I'm like an asking fiend. You're crushing it. I'm so proud. Really, every time I ask, I'm like, oh my gosh, do I text Allie and let her know I've asked? Do I text her and let her know they said yes? And we've gotten to share some cool opportunities. Like, you have a great opportunity with uh, one of our clients, Fiji, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we get to, like, bring people back and forth, which is amazing. And that's the best part about, like, being in business and being friends. But, yeah, I'm just so excited to chat with you and jam out on partnerships. I love this. And I think even when it comes to partnerships and the ask— And maybe this is even coming from my background in events. I used to work for a corporation in events and marketing and sponsorships. So this is an energy muscle that I get to now flex in a different way for my own brand, my own events, and bring friends along for the ride. But from an event standpoint, I always like to think, okay, like, what's the worst? What's the worst case scenario? I apply that so much now as an entrepreneur Mm. in any situation. But even then in events and with partnerships, kind of what we want to chat about here today is do the ask. Make the ask. And what is the worst thing that can happen? Yeah. Two things that come to mind. One, they say no. Two, they ghost you. Mm. And that's, in my opinion, the worst two options that can happen. The best case scenario, they would love to work with you. Mm-hmm. And maybe that means I've had a variety of some, you know, smaller companies would be happy to contribute product to an event, an event swag bag, but they want me to come pick it up or they want me to pay 35 to $75 for shipping or delivery. No problem. Mm-hmm. If that makes this move along quicker, easier, more fluid, keeps the partnership alive, and maybe they would be interested to come back for a second opportunity because it was an easy no-brainer answer for me to say, yes, just send me the invoice or send me the link to pay. That is money well spent on, in my opinion. Totally. And how you can move things along. Yes. Okay, very quickly, because this isn't what the podcast is about, but isn't it amazing how you're taking a past skill that you had pre-entrepreneurship and you're using that and leveraging it in your business? Like, I'm such a big believer in, like, nothing wasted. Like, all these things that we're learning, we're learning them for, like, our best and highest use. And I was actually talking about this with Bat on my team the other day because you know this, but I bought a 360 photo booth. Love that. Congratulations. Okay. Thank you so proud much. Proud new owner. Yeah, proud new owner of a 360 photo booth. If you'd like to rent it, please connect at the social snippet. But we were talking about it, and I was like, oh, like, this is what it would cost for us to rent it out to people. Here's a friends and family, right? Like, we were kind of going through all the math. And Ben was like, wouldn't it be sad if this is how you made your first, like, you know, you had your first, like, $10 million a year is because, you know, you have this photo booth you're renting out to everybody. And I'm like, no, because I wouldn't have known about the photo booth without the social snippet, which I wouldn't have done without all my previous, like, part-time experience doing social. Like, all of these things built together. I don't think that's going to be my claim to the fortunes. But you never know. Never say never. You never say never. People have made money on weirder things. Absolutely. 
And I, I totally agree with this point because I was saying this to someone just yesterday, how you know Matt and I own Benchmark Fitness, our yeah. brick and mortar gym in downtown Burlington. It's beautiful. Thank you. And we love having you. I love coming. Last time I, well, the one time I went to a stretching class, I will say that I, I found new parts of my body that hurt after. So uh, I always say that Ali is a fit queen, which we know, but she always like takes it to the next level. There's always new things to do. Oh, I love that. Love having you. <laughs> and I was saying this to someone yesterday how, you know, we own a brick and mortar space that's a gym, but it is a combination of all of my past experiences from a career standpoint, as well as passion. So fitness is my passion. It's fueled by a very deep why, you know, at the, after the loss of my brother. And mm-hmm. I just shared this actually on an episode not or like a couple weeks ago about lessons learned from losing my brother. But that is my why. That's my purpose of why fitness is so important. But then I have all these little sprinkles of event planning because we do monthly member socials or with classes. I've taught group fitness. I have a background in fashion. That was my education, my university education. I love making our branded apparel that we sell in our boutique. PR, I worked in a PR agency. I am the face of our business. And what that means from a PR and now obviously social media is so huge compared to when I worked for a public relations agency. But all of these past experiences are wound up into like a little wonton of experiences. And that makes me the entrepreneur that I am today. Okay, really, really, really fast question. Would you rather eat a wonton or would you rather eat a flaming hot Cheeto? I think I'd take the wonton. Okay, yep. Just really wanted to check in on this. I knew you would love that little, like, analogy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. A little snack of a wonton (laughs) analogy. (laughs) But it's so true. Like, we all have all of these experiences that really, like, build us to who we are today and give us all of these skills. And that's why it's so important, like, when we're building, like, our businesses to not be afraid to ask people for help and even for us like we've had mentors be like how did you get cash sponsorship like how did you get such amazing swag bags and we're like oh my gosh if we could do it we know you could do this 10 times you have like 10 times 20 times 100 times the audience that we do right and so i want to talk to you today about partnerships because this is something i've been thinking about a lot lately where a lot of people are just like scared to make the asks and they don't know how to get started and i was definitely in that position when we started running our 100 event i was like you know do i ask for swag bag things do i ask for sponsors and now i'm shameless, like in the ask, because I see it as a valuable opportunity for the other person. If I don't see it as a valuable opportunity for the other person, I'm not going to make the ask. But curious for you, maybe like, what are some tips or things that you can think of if someone wants to make the ask for whether it be sponsorship, whether it be a partnership, whether it be a swag bag, whether it be like a gifted item, like how how to kind of frame it? What, what are some tips that you have? One of my tips would be, you know, even having the conversation along, like helping someone along. Like I think in entrepreneurship, it's so wonderful when we can be supportive of one another and people doing things for the very first time, Mm -hmm. like asking for sponsorship or partnerships or how do you get swag bag items. However, I will say that there is power in guiding people for the journey versus just handing them the the key to the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Because... We, you and I both collectively, have worked really hard to create and nurture relationships in terms of partnerships. And you want to be respectful of that and a little bit protective. Now, I am not saying that, and I've seen some people do this on social, and I find it very, it's very harsh energy that doesn't resonate for me of basically saying, like, don't ask me where I make my clothes. I'm not going to tell you. Don't ask me this, this, or this. I feel like that's very negative, harsh energy. But I think in, you know, what I'm saying here for the example about partnerships and let's use like swag bags. Yeah. An item for a swag bag, like a, a trail mix bundle or something or a bar. But I'm thinking of like things in bags. I have a few thoughts here that when you, you're you asking, you're helping someone, I think giving them the roadmap of, and I will share this here for everybody listening on both of our platforms. My approach is if I especially don't already have a warm lead with this brand or product, I will t- start in the DMs. Mm. I will connect with them on the DMs and say something nice. Maybe it is a brand that I have purchased that, you know, I'm going to use specifics, Hand Fuel. Hand mm. Fuel is a great product. They make really great snacks. Love they them. Have powerful branding. They are attractive packaging and they're they're good. And I've spent my own money on these products before. So I started in the DMs just saying, hi, like I love your product or this is the flavor that I love the most. I have this event coming up. Who would the best who would be the best person to connect with to chat about collaboration opportunities? And then somebody, hopefully, 
will reply. But again, worst case scenario, they say no or they ghost me. But step two, it's positive. They reply. They give me the email, whether it's a direct contact or like info at handfuel.com. Then I will follow up with an email and it'll be a nicely crafted email. I'm now getting to a point where I have professional decks made by your amazing team at the social snippet that now has provided credibility of who I am as an event host. Do I have like insights from you know previous events of this nature, event photos or video? And I can provide that credibility of like, this is the event. This is the date. This is approximately how many people I'm expecting. I would love to have you a part of this. And this is what I would like to offer you in return. Mm-hmm. And then again, hopefully somebody replies and then you take it to email. But you're going for the approach of who is the best person to make this ask to. Totally. Okay. I love that. So many nuggets there. And that was definitely what you shared with me when we were getting started because I was such a newbie in, in all of this space. And Hanfield such a great example where, you know, you reach out and you want to find people, I think, that are aligned for you, but that you actually like love their products mm-hmm. and stuff too, rather than the like spray and pray method, rather like choosing people who you're like, oh, I actually like, I love this thing and I can speak to it rather than being like, oh, I'm going to take this like electrolyte mix, even though I don't really like electrolytes or, or whatever, like hopefully you like electrolytes. I think we all need them, but just things like like that where I think often people will just like want free things, but it's sometimes that value is really important. And something that you spoke to, which I think is really important, which is the difference of why I think you get so many yeses, other than the fact you're so cute and fun, is a big piece of it, I think, is the like, how do I add value back to you? Mm-hmm. And that is the difference is like if you're asking these people for something, they also run businesses. There has to be a level of ROI there. And people I found have been so good about doing repeat partnerships, even with like I have a decently small audience. Like I'm not like, you know, 100,000 followers or anything like that. Neither are you. But because we are like, hey, how do we like make this a long term partnership? How is this win win for both of us? How do we get you to a spot where like we're actually supporting some of your goals? And I was saying this earlier. I have a story I want to share because. I've been collecting sponsorship for High Vibe Women and it's been going so well. And I will tell you, it's so much easier having done it before Mm -hmm. because I have people to – I'm sure you found this too. Like the first time you do it, you're really navigating your network. You're like, oh, I know this person. I've met this person. I've done this. But now I have a little bit more cred to go to like a stranger. I don't know if you found this as time goes on. For sure. And you have – like you – we both invest in – people, teams, to be on site to capture content. And content is key right now. That is one of the best ways that you can add value to people that you're working with. And so now that you've done your first High Vibe Women event, and it was amazing, and you're getting ready for your second one, sold out in October. So you're going to have even more content. But between event one and event two, you are able to provide event photos or video testimonials, recap reels, YouTube videos, Plus insights if, if some people – and I've been working with brands now and I was sharing this with you about one offline before we hit record – that they wanted to see insights. And some partners want to and some don't. They want the content. And so they're knowing what it is to your point about how you can provide value. Yeah. And one thing I'll even sort of say to piggyback on that is I actually am very proud of being a – and I don't love to use the word influencer. But for purpose of this conversation, I will say I'm proud to be a micro-influencer mm-hmm. because – some partners really see the value in that because we do want to over deliver in what are we delivering to them yes. in terms of content. Do you say it's three reels, but you really give four? Do you do three reels plus refer people to buy their product or do Google reviews or testimonials? You know, this is yes. different depending on is it a photographer that you're working with or a snack partner or a hairstylist, whatever it may be, and sort of being able to navigate that and identify additional ways that you can provide the value. Yeah, I love that. We did a brand partnership actually once where um, the they didn't ask for for much. Like they were like, yeah, like, you know, it was a – we were doing a travel partnership and then we went out for dinner. And they were like, oh, just like if you could like make a reel and include us in this reel, that would be awesome. We're like, no problem. We did a Google review that the last time I checked there were 30,000 impressions on it which is a lot for Google. Like, it's quite a bit. And we're like the top-ranked Google review. We included photos. And they were like, wow, blown away by it. That's a no-brainer. That took us no time. We had already taken the photos, right? So how do you over-deliver? And this actually brings to my point. So I reached out to a brand that I love. I love this brand. And they will one day be the VIP sponsor for High Vibe Women. It's not today, but mm. they they will be. And I reached out to them and they were like, hey, sorry, we've already like allocated all our funds for 2024. I'm like, what about 2025? They're like, oh, you know, and they, they were just kind of like, you know, and, and this is actually something that is so hard. It's the repeat ask, right? It's sometimes when people are like ghosting you, 
it's actually really not about you. They're getting a lot of requests. They've got lots going on. They actually want your persistence. My friend is the CEO of a major events company, and she's like, I, I follow up every three days. I'm like, that's a little much for me, but I'd love that for you, right? Like, you find your own cadence. But I reached out to this company, and they were kind of like, you know, and they don't know me from anyone. So there, there's actually really, like, no reason they should give me money. But I said, hey, totally understand the sponsorship's not on the table right now. What's What are some of your goals and how do we add most value to you? Is there any way that we can partner that we can add value to you right now? And she responded back and she's like, I actually have some social media budget. I'm wondering if you would. And this is a tool we use all the time that we pay for. She's like, I'm wondering if I could pay you to make some social media content. We're like, yeah, that's a no brainer. They have a major Boring effect. Yeah. like, But like, wow. Right. Like that's such an awesome opportunity that wasn't there before. Or we're going on a, like a little retreat with a, a number of women. I know you can't make it, but we're going on a retreat for a number of women in the place. We reached out to them. We're like, can we make you guys some content? They were kind of like, oh, we don't really like need any content. I was like, no problem. What do you guys need right now? Because they are a dream partner. They're like, we'd love to give you guys a free wellness class. Thank you so much for, you know, bringing all these women together and, and having them come. And we'd love to see a long term partnership here. Wow. Like that was such a huge value that, you know, was probably a thousand dollars that and now I don't have to spend. But these things come up like if you're just like tenacious with this idea that it doesn't have to look the way you want it to look, but it can sometimes look even better than what we can even imagine. And the more partnerships you have under their belt, the more social proof it is to other brands that you're a partner, that you're somebody that people want to partner with. So that's just like for me, I'm like, OK, how do we continue to like really just add value to people, which I know is something that's important to you. And you know what, Matt has, Matt's my husband, for those of you listening that don't know, he has an extensive experience in customer service and sales. And he would always sort of encourage me and coach me through of like, don't close the door, mm -hmm. that you might get the answer that you don't want. It might be a no or a no, not right now, but that's not necessarily a forever answer. No. Yeah, I totally. also have a background in network marketing and that's like one of the foundational lessons and that the fortune is in the follow-up. Mm -hmm. People need multiple impressions before they buy something, take action on something. And so crafting that follow-up that is within your character, what is your tone and, you know, still being persistent yeah. and tenacious that you do want to work with this brand or this product. And I think even another Point I kind of wanted to share is that people now, like in terms of consuming content, especially online, people are really smart. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm a very much like health and wellness passionate person, the, how I, you know, in my business, my lifestyle, products that I use. If I said like I'm doing a paid sponsorship or the, the title sponsor for my event is McDonald's, that's not an energetic match for me. And people would know that. <laughs> Chicken nuggets are not an energetic match uh, for Ali Ruda. Shocking, I know. But it's just, huh. uh, I think, to provide that context that if you're going to work with brands, whether it be from a sponsorship standpoint, event packaging, or swag bag donations, or even, you know, the way of, like, social media paid partnerships, collaborations, of working with brands that you really believe in or that you've already put money into their pocket. Yes. That people that are watching on the other side of the lens, they're smart consumers, and so they can kind of figure out any BS of like, eh, I don't know. I don't really believe this. This is totally paid and this doesn't feel authentic. Mm -hmm. And I was having this conversation with a brand new partner yesterday of how I'm so excited to work with them because I am really passionate about working with products and brands and people that I feel aligned with. Yes, totally. And actually it makes it so much easier of a partnership, right, when you can actually speak to what they do, and you do this so well where, you know, you're always, you were joking about this a few months ago. You're like, my referral era is done. Like, I'm making. <laughs> <laughs> I retired from referral. <laughs> but it's like, that's so of nature for you and I, where we're always like, if anyone lives anywhere near Burlington, I'm like, where do you work out? Like, what's the scoop on the, your workout situation? And then, and then they'll be like, oh, I don't work out. And I was like, have you ever thought about working out? Like, I'm like giving fitness advice over here. And I'm like, my friends own this gym. Like, you need to check it out. And here's like why. And here, you know, and we've had a few of like my connections join Benchmark mm -hmm. from from me just like mentioning it and popping up in my stories about it. And and in the same way, like we've had a number of referrals from you. We were just talking about this earlier, like because people see what you're up to and, and it's a natural kind of connection. And, and that's why I think it's so important to be cultivating those relationships even before you need them. 
Mm-hmm. Like before you're like really going to even make the ask, like how do you add value to people so that it's like a bit of a no brainer when it's time to to make the actual ask? Because you've been showing up for them this whole time. So even like I think about Chris and Lori, like Chris and Lori have been such mentors and friends to us, which is like such a gift. And a big part of like Chris always says to me, he's like, you like, like how I kind of got to know you. And people would always be like, oh, I'm so jealous of your relationship. Like, you know, I was in that room too. And I'm like, yeah, but I like. I would listen to those episodes and I would send them a note thinking about what I'm thinking about. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Or like if I like w- like if I'm someone who I'm like, oh, I really want to be connected to that person. Like they're so cool. Like they're doing stuff that I'm interested in. I will go and I will say, hey, I just want to let you know, like here's the things that I really loved or how can I bring you closer to your goal? I'd love to help. I make a connection that makes a difference for them. And that makes such a big like difference. And when you find those like super connectors who do that with you as well, it makes such an impact. And I think when you're cultivating those partnerships, you can't be afraid to be going first. Oh, totally. And I think there is a a line that many people could see it being skewed, and I would encourage you not to to blur it, that, you know, you don't need to be paid just to share something. Yeah. You know, in the world of influencer marketing, if there is someone that you love that that is a person, like Christina, who is one of the co-owners of The Social Snippet, which we are so proud to work with, Mm. I am so proud to share and tell people that this is who we work with and this is what, you know, this is the retainer that we have. I'm not going to tell you, like, break down my invoice, but this is the services that we invest in on a monthly basis. And I'm so happy to connect to you if that's something that you feel that you need. It is so natural for me to share. And I think people should feel really proud to be able to share people, products, services that they love and not expect anything back for it. A hundred percent. And that is actually something that I think where things go like awry for people Mm -hmm. is that people expect money for everything. And I think there's something great about people knowing their worth. I'm like really into that. And I do a lot of free things. So so that sometimes I'm like, maybe should charge for that. But there's also this huge thing where I'm like, sometimes it's about that goodwill you put in that one time. Mm Mm-hmm. And you put in some goodwill, you go to that restaurant and you post about it, and that makes a huge difference for the business owner. And the next time you go in and it's a free coffee. Like these things happen, right? Like these these natural relationships just form. And I think when we're so consumed with like every breath we take needs to make us a dollar. It's exhausting. Just, it's, it's tiring. But then it's also like you can't do anything from a good spot. Yeah. It's a karma game too. Yes. Yeah, universe and go woo here. The universe is always watching and arranging things for you. And so then you'll be rewarded for your good karma and doing these good deeds and putting money. And again, Chris will say this on some of his podcasts, like you're putting money in someone else's pocket. So like we just got a, Matt and I got a quote for what we're going to do another round of renovations and enhancements to our gym. Of what, woo, what value that will provide to our community and people that have not yet joined our community. But that is going to cost us. A lot of dollars. Yeah. (laughs) More dollars than we thought. And I I think that's the game in in terms of construction and all that. However, walking home and processing that, I heard that and then went for a walk and was thinking, you know, my mind was in one side. But then I tried to redirect it and be like, no, how cool is it that we're putting money in this person's pocket and we we know this person Mm. and we know what's happening in this person's life and that positive ripple effect of where that money goes And so I think the sooner that we can even surround ourselves with people and propaganda that support Mm. this perspective when it comes to providing value and pouring into your network for your network. Yes. And we heard Brendan Bouchard say that. Totally. Like networking for your network. It's such a big thing. I was actually going to say I have a friend who only buys things from people in the middle of the night. And I was like, that is insane. And she's like, I do it so they wake up with a sale. Oh, I love that. Right? So they wake up and, you know, when you've put something out there and and maybe people aren't buying as fast as you want them to be buying and, you know, and then they wake up and they're like, wow, that's the beginning of their day. And you can't not have a good day Mm -hmm. when you start your day with a sale. Jeanette and I are doing a retreat and this morning we woke up to a number of sales and we were like, whoa, oh, amazing. Unexpected, right? And so I think it's, it's one of those things where, like, we need to see it all as kind of like a reciprocity game. And I think that's why I want to talk to you about this. Like, when we have this, like, we had this podcasting time together, and I was like, oh, we need to talk about adding value because that is like the key, I think, to maintaining long term partnerships. So, last question I'll ask you, and then we'll wrap. So, if someone was like, I don't know how to add value to these people, like, I, I really want to make it a sweet deal for someone. What are the things that are like easy, low hanging fruit that people could add value to, like a partner, or a sponsor, or a vendor, to be able to like move the needle in a partnership? One of the things that I've been do- doing right now in this new partnership that I'm working with is over communicating my gratitude. Mm. And I'm a words of affirmation girly, so yeah, I respond really well to that. 
but I also like to pour that into other people. And I don't think it matters who you are and what your love language is. Who doesn't like to hear nice things? Mm. And just saying, or after in-person meetings about partnerships or collaborations, I like to send a follow-up, thanking them for their time. I'm really excited about this opportunity. Maybe we discussed some ideas specifically that I can reference, of you know, timelines or what this would be, or I can't wait to share this with my team. And then having those continuous touch points and over communicating my gratitude and excitement. Love that. And when it comes to, you know, swag bag sponsors, because I know that's been kind of an area that we've been chatting about with providing value, is ensuring that you have your shot list prepared Mm. and you share that with your team that you are investing in and hiring for your event, that you capture content, and then you can always do better. Like I'm of the firm believer that you can always do better. You can always over deliver and provide more and more value. And so that's something that I learn along the way from events now that I am fortunate enough and have built these connections and relationships to have some great products and partners. I want to ensure that I'm providing them with what they need and always extracting the learning lessons from each event. Love that. Oh my gosh. And those were two that I wasn't expecting. Mm-hmm. I wasn't, that wasn't what I was expecting you to say. So that's awesome. What were you expecting? I think I was just expecting like, you know, really over delivering for people. Like, you know, if someone asks you for five photos, you're giving 10 or you're giving a reel and, and that you're not afraid to, again, I love the idea of expressing gratitude, but you're not also afraid to show people like, hey, I'm like, I'm so proud to be partnered with this person, like publicly and more than what they're expecting. I, this is a small tangent, but um, we went recently to a um, influencer party with Later. Me and Jeanette went and I love Later so much. And they're like a dream high vibe woman partner. And I had been kind of, you know, I had done a lot of cold pitching and it had never come to fruition. And then I made a connection with someone at Later through somebody I knew and he invited me to this party. I was like, great. I met all of the most amazing, they're an amazing team. I, we did this, Jeanette and I did this podcast episode where we just talked about the party, but we also just talked about later. Like, I was like, hey, here's why I love later. Here's why I think it makes such an impact for business owners, whatever. Later, listen to it. They sent me a note this week and they were like, hey, we're wondering if we could just send you some swag and talk partnerships. Like, you know, like, let's get on the phone kind of thing. That's awesome. I couldn't have paid for that, you know, but it like, but it took tenacity. I've sent some cold emails over and over again, right? But sometimes it's just waiting for the right opportunity. And so I think, yeah, I think it's just waiting for that sometimes and being okay with like being okay with the no's because it makes the yeses even better. And one more thing I'll add to that. Well, first of all, that's amazing. So that's a little celebration. We. Oui. But one of the things I wanted to add maybe as an, an additional point is how are you showing up? And this could be you know, spread across a couple different examples, whether it is, I talk about this a lot of when you're going into rooms, like a mastermind or a live event, but also like say a social media partnership collaboration. I had a meeting yesterday and shot content, but also with uh, events and swag. So you can take this and extract it for the appropriate example that fits for you listening, but is how are you showing up? Mm. Are you showing up polished? Like yesterday I chose to wear a dress that was on brand with the company colors. Mm, love it. So that that would look well in content. Right now I'm wearing a pink dress. That is not their brand color. They're navy and neutrals. So I wore a neutral dress because I wanted to complement everything that they've worked so hard to create from a brand. So I think if you can also think about those little things and how that will perform and how that will have positive impact for who you want to work with is another way to add easy value. Ah, oh, I love it. Ali, thank you so much for this. I'm so excited to always chat with you and I know there's more to come, but this was so fun. Thank you for the chat. And I love that this is something that we get to jam about so often, you know, here in this amazing studio, but also on our girls weekends and lunches and wine dates and all the things in between. Oh, I love it. We're going to have to get Rochelle out and we're going to have to do uh, some more podcasting. I can't wait. Yay. Awesome. Thank you so much for listening. If you love this episode, it would mean the world to me if you took 30 seconds and shared this on social media, send it to a friend or leave a five-star review. There is power in community, and I am so grateful to have you part of mine. 